Without any more ado, I take this opportunity and honor to invite the chairperson of Muni University Council, Dr. Engineer Joel Aita. You're welcome. Uh, the guest of honor, the ministers, members of parliament, religious and traditional leaders, permanent secretaries, resident district stroke city commissioners, the city mayor and district chairpersons, the Chancellor, Muni University, the members of the Muni University Council and Senate, the Vice Chancellor, Muni University, and other sister universities, management and staff of Muni University, the Guild President and the Cabinet, graduates, and student of Moni University, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome everyone joining us here at Moni University Graduation Square. On behalf of the entire university and on my own behalf, I'm excited to celebrate this significant occasion. In a special way, I would like to congratulate the graduation class 2024. Today marks a culmination of your hard work and dedication, and we're incredibly proud of all you have accomplished. May you clap for yourself. And to our honorable minister, we want to congratulate you for the recent reappointment. We are very happy that you're back. Guest of honor, today marks a unique date in the history of Moni University, for we are here not only to hold our sixth graduation ceremony, but to also install our second vice chancellor, Associate Professor Anguma Simon Katrini. Allow me to extend another warm congratulations to the vice chancellor, Associate Professor Anguma Simon Katrini. I congratulate you, sir. At this point, I also want to pay a special tribute to our great founder, vice chancellor. Professor Christine, for the great foundation stone she has laid upon which we are building Moni University. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Guest of honor, the Moni University Governing Council, in line with our mandate of setting strategic direction for the university to implement the five objectives laid out in our founding instrument has set up ambitious strategies for the university. Our first strategy we have laid before for the management to implement is the student enrollment. Guest of honor, to foster inclusivity and accessibility in higher education particularly at both undergraduate and postgraduate levels, we have established an ambitious objective that is to enroll 15,000 students to Muni University by the year 2030. This goal may look high, but it is not beyond reach. I'm pleased to acknowledge, guest of honor, 
that since the inception of these targets, our management and staff has made remarkable strides. Within the span of two years, we have effectively more than tripled our enrollment from 2021, where we had 429 students, to the current 1,361 students in just a span of two years. So our target of 15,000 students by 2030, the management and staff of Moody University must do everything possible to ensure this target is achieved. These tangible achievements not only reflect our dedication to expanding educational opportunities, but also underscore the efficacy of the strategic initiatives the council and management is putting in place. As we continue to march towards the envisioned horizon, let us remain steadfast in our commitment to fostering a thriving academic environment that nurtures the intellectual growth and potential of every aspiring student. Guest of honor, our next target is in the area of research and grants. Our vision extends beyond mere academic pursuits. It also encompasses a profound dedication to applied research as listed by our Vice Chancellor Aliron aimed at catalyzing community transformation. Guest of honor, we are charting a course where Muni University has to emerge as a preeminent research hub and recipient of substantial grants throughout Africa. We want Muni University to become a huge recipient or a hub for research. So our strategy is laying that in place. Guest of honor, our third strategy is on community engagement. To effectively realize Muni University's founding objectives, Muni University is committed to implementing a comprehensive strategy known as anchoring in place for civic engagement. This strategic approach entails fostering meaningful connections and collaborations with communities of West Nile, Uganda, and beyond, with the aim of making tangible differences in their civic life. Guest of honor, I'm pleased to announce that Muni University has taken significant steps towards realizing this strategy by entering a number of MOUs that is Memorandum of Understanding. The recent one we have just entered with is with VNG, an in, uh, international organization. This partnership will facilitate our community engagement, and it will also enable us to establish the Muni University Institute of Leadership and Governance. The institute will serve as a central hub for engaging with various stakeholders, including local governments, civil society organizations, and the private sector. By fostering collaboration and dialogue, the Institute will play a pivotal role in driving positive change and fostering inclusive governance practices within our communities. Through these concerted efforts, Moon University is poised to become a catalyst for social transformation, empowering communities and advancing the common good in West Nile, Uganda, and beyond. Along that line, we would like to also extend a warm invitation to members of the business community to collaborate with Muni University in development of essential infrastructure, particularly the construction of hostels and other amenities. With the rapid increase in student enrollment, there is pressing demand for these facilities to accommodate our growing student population. So we therefore like to welcome the business community, especially the one in West Nile, to engage 
with the Muni University management so that we can start having hostels and other amenities within uh, the university here. Fourth is the area of revenue generation. Guest of honor, in our pursuit to alleviate the financial strain, Muni University has taken proactive measures by establishing the Muni University Investment Company. This is a company which is wholly owned by the university. The council has given mandate to the CEO and management of the investment company to make money. Can I ask the CEO of the investment company to stand up for recognition, if he's around? Dr. Nazarius, Dr. Nazarius, I, I, I have seen you somewhere. Can you st stand up for recognition? Dr. Nazarius. Okay, Na Nazarius is somewhere up there. Now we have appointed Nazarius as our acting CEO for the investment company. That is where, that is you. Dr. Nazarius, the council is giving you one year to start making profit. If not, we will fire you. <laughs> Guest of honor, if we capitalized this company with only 20 billion in the next 10 years, we will not need a lot of support from government. So we request Guest of Honor to help us capitalize this company. Thank you. Infrastructure development. Guest of Honor, with the showing numbers of students and staff, we have already started facing challenges of inadequate infrastructure. Top on our agenda is infrastructure for Faculty of Medicine and the Faculty of Engineering. These two critical faculties present pillars of knowledge and innovation that are essential for addressing the evolving needs of our society <coughs> and economy. So we need more money to add more infrastructure to be able to be critical for this West Nile region. Guest of honor, I'm also honored to announce the strides made by Mon University in facilitating effective management and governance to propel our institution towards greater heights. Over the past year, the University Council has enacted several policies to provide a robust framework for our endeavors. Among these policies, I would like to emphasize some few. One, staff training and development policy. We have set up a policy for staff training and development which underscores our commitment to fostering a culture of continuous learning and growth among our staff members. So the staff training policy looks at continuous development of our staff. We have also enacted the revised staff establishment. The revised staff establishment policy serves as a blueprint for optimizing our human resources management practices. We have also enacted the money research and innovation fund guidelines. With the establishment of the money research and investment fund, we aim to catalyze research excellency and innovation within our academic community. With this policy, we opened up the research fund to a wider array of people, including students, who can be able to access this research fund if they come in groups of five to 10. And then lastly, our standard operating procedures for tuition waiver. Guest of honor, the council has waived tuition for all the staff of Moni and their children as long as they study within Moni University. In line with our commitment to promoting equitable 
access to education, the standard operating procedures for tuition waiver ensures transparency, fairness, and consistency in the administration of the tuition assistance program. With that tuition waiver, we expect to see our staff study. Time is coming very soon when we are going to ask our staff, why have you not studied? We are going to put a minimum so nobody should have excuse for that. Therefore, they are graduate, graduates. This goes to all our graduates. First and foremost, allow me to once again extend my warm congratulations to each one of you on this historic occasion. As you stand on the threshold of a new chapter in your lives, I urge you to embrace the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead with courage, determination, and optimism. As you venture forth into the world, pause to make your remark and effect positive change. I offer you some few words to navigate the journey. One, seek support. As you're out there, seek support. Recognize the importance of seeking guidance and support from others as you navigate life's challenges. Whether it's a mentor, friend, or family member, having someone to lean on can make all the difference in your journey towards success and fulfillment. Embrace respect. Treat every individual with dignity, empathy, and kindness. Respect is a foundation of meaningful relationships and a cornerstone of a harmonious society. Thirdly, navigate adversity. Understand that life is inherent, inherently unpredictable and not always fair. Instead of dwelling on setbacks or obstacles, focus on moving forward with resilience and perseverance. Every challenge in, is an opportunity for growth and personal development. Fourthly, embrace failure. Don't let the fear of failure hold you back from pursuing your dreams. Embrace failure as a natural part of the learning process and a stepping stone towards success. Remember, it's not how many times you fall down that matters, but how many times you get up and keep moving forward. Then take calculated risks. There to step out of your comfort zone and embrace uncertainty. Take calculated risks. It is also an essential part for personal and professional growth, innovation, and seizing new opportunities. And lastly, be resilient in tough times. In times of adversity, demonstrate courage, resilience, and leadership. Step up to the plate when faced with challenges and inspire others with, a, with your strength, determination, and unwavering resolve. That way, you'll get out into the world and change the world in a positive way. Guest of honor, finally, I would like to introduce my council members. My council members who are present, can you please stand and wave to the people? Thank you. I have a, a very, very uh, cooperative council, and we're working in a very good way. Thank you so much for attending. Therefore, I want to conclude by saying congratulations to the graduates and congratulations to our vice chancellor. We have now given you a huge mandate, and the council will be seeing how you'll be operating. But the council 
together with the chancellor, will give you all our support to take money to a greater height. I say this for God and my country. Thank you, Chair. As uh, before you go, I request you to perform a function of inviting the Chancellor to address the congregation. I would like to take this opportunity to invite our Chancellor, retired Archbishop, Luke Orombi. May we give him a big hand clap. Thank you, thank you very much. Chair to the Council.